All right, thank you so much here at the program this morning on ITV on Independent Television. The issue of uh, security of Nigeria is a major concern to all and sundry. And a uh, major concern to Nigerians, you may want to say, uh, more so the fact that uh, Nigeria as a nation has been battling with uh, banditry for quite some time now. Now, I remember towards the three lights of uh, the end of the former administration, whereby uh, the former Minister of Labour and Culture, Alaji Lai Mohamed, actually said that uh, his administration has succeeded in decimated, uh, decimating now uh, the security, decimating banditry in the north and, of course, in other parts of uh, uh, the country. And uh, I think that was also what gave rise to the smooth election that uh, we saw. Uh, little wonder people are still praising uh, the administration of Buhari, the way he actually handled the insecurity issues before the election and even during the election. Uh, good one to know that during the election, we, didn't, we hardly had any reports of uh, any attack anywhere. Nigeria had a seamless election. But just uh, after the election and uh, perhaps after results were announced and uh, new governor sworn in, we started hearing of attacks here and there. Now, particularly for major states in the north, we have Bornu, uh, we have Zamfara State now, uh, we have uh, Kanu State, we have Kaduna State, and also we have Benue State. And I understand that Kogi is also, there yeah, are reports of insecurity issues in Kogi uh, State too. Now, the big question is, what is going on? I mean, in other states, we have new governors that have just taken over from their predecessors. And also the fact that we have new service chiefs that have, uh, that have been appointed by uh, the president. So what is going on? What is the case this time? Is it an indication that uh, these new governors cannot handle uh, the security challenges in their states? Or is it simply an indication that uh, the new service chiefs may not be, handled, uh, to, may not be able to handle the security issues in, their, in, in the country? Or the fact that these new service chiefs are, are still settling down uh, to really see what is going on in the country? Well, these are some of the issues we're going to be talking about today on the topic, uh, the rising banditry in the north and the tax for the governors and, of course, uh, the new service chiefs. Well, we're so privileged to have Alaji Al-Amin Alao, a constitutional lawyer and, of course, uh, a public affairs analyst. Are you welcome to the program this morning on Thank you very much, Good morning, viewers. All right. And also we have a big brother friend, uh, Barrister Mbanefo Alakwe. So you welcome to the program. Thank you very much. And I like the way you Good are morning, dressed yes. up. I like the way you are dressed up. <laughs> Thank right. you very much. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, gentlemen, uh, just like what we, uh, we said, uh, Al Amin, what do you think is going on uh, with the rising banditry in some parts of the north, so four major uh, states of the north? Is it an indication that um, the new governors may not be able or that the new service chiefs are still understanding the situation? Thank you very much. The case of rising banditry, if we may define it that way, because we do not know the statistics to actually use to determine whether it is rising or it is consistent or it is actually reducing. But like you have actually rightly said in your analysis that before the election, during the election, it appears the Terrorists also were interested in the, the, election. <laughs> the election too. So they decided to suspend the action temporarily, and after the election, they decided to resume. Uh, during the time that uh, we had the, the design of the Naira, and the Naira was not in circulation, we also observed then that the uh, uh, issue of kidnapping uh, was no longer taking place because there was no money in circulation to pay the ransom. Mm. Some attached that as one of the advantages or the benefits of the lack of money in circulation, but we cannot continue to uh, live that way. And also now we have much money in circulation again. We have people who have been kidnapped, who are yet to be released. Uh, so now you can no longer say you don't have the money to pay the ransom because they believe in, uh, in collecting cash. Now, the new service chiefs that have been appointed, the uh, rise in the case of banditry, uh, terrorism uh, cannot be attributed to the appointment. Uh, otherwise, be given an impression that, oh, could it be that the terrorists prefer the old service chiefs? Mm. <laughs> now they are protesting. Why should you remove those people? Why do you bring in, uh, you know? Uh, it has nothing to do with that. Of course, 
the new service chiefs are to also be in charge to give uh, orders and commands to the officers that were under the control of the old uh, service uh, chiefs. Some use the word that the other uh, services were sacked. They were not sacked. When a new government comes into place, it's normal that you want other people to work for you, not because those who are working were not good or they could not perform. But the problem of Nigeria is beyond uh, the issue of uh, who is the service chief, whether they are competent or not. It's a very serious problem. It's a complicated problem. And that explains why most of the time I always uh, mention the issue of God. Nigeria is a country that we do not have the fear of God. If we have the fear of God, we keep to the two laws. Huh? Then uh, someone approached Jesus and said, uh, which is the grace of the commandment? He said, Hear, O Israel, our Lord, our God, is one God. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And he said, that there is no other commandment greater than these two. Meaning that you believe in only one God and love thy neighbor as you love yourself. Who is your neighbor? Your neighbor does not necessarily mean the person that's living next to you, the next house. The, anybody that is close to you is your neighbor. Either in your neighbors or in the aircraft or in the streets. The person next to you is your neighbor. Mm -hmm. That is, love thy neighbor as yourself. Now, you see, the problem is after the civil war, after the civil war, we had arm robbery. And arm robbery refused to go. People say, oh, possibly the arms that were in circulation during the war, those who are having them are committing robbery with them. But it never stopped. And then we observed that recently, Nigeria never had any civil war. But the rate at which people are carrying AK-47 and other weapons. So now it boils down to our borders. Meaning that there is influx of arms into the country. Who do we not blame? Those who bring in the arms or the manufacturer of the arms. The white men who have manufactured the arms, they want to sell and make money. Hmm. Those arms are not meant for killing lions. They are only meant for killing human beings. And so when they sell, you have people who buy from them, who import illegally, bring it to the country. Now when you have a similar buy, the armed forces, the police, security agencies, they have arms. And then the bandits, the terrorists, they also have arms. And maybe the arms are sophisticated. Sophisticated. So now, in such a situation, there is a big problem. So the man that has pulled the trigger may not be the problem, but may be the custom officers who are taking bribe and allow influx of arms to the country. So it's so complicated. After the civil war, arm robbery, arm robbery, arm robbery, then at a particular time, they felt, oh, arm robbery is no longer lucrative. You break into somebody's house, you risk your life, and how much you collect? Only what he has on him. So they started kidnapping. Now when they kidnap, they will take you away, and now they are now asking millions. So they prefer that to arm robbery. Oh, we have been taking this arm robbery. This is a better business for us. And now it's not stopping. Because we do not fear God. Now, what can we say can be the cause of all this? Why do we think along that way? Poverty. Okay, let me pause you and uh, bring your barrister and Balen for in. Now, uh, uh, barrister, now we have uh, four major states, uh, like we said a while ago. Uh, we have uh, Kano states, uh, parts of Cardinal states. We have uh, Zamfara, and of course, uh, we have Benue State. Now, in Zamfara, something happened recently that uh, bandits, uh, you know, they normally go around and take levies, <laughs> you know, from the villagers and all that. Now, uh, on a certain day, the, the villagers protested that they cannot be paying these levies anymore. And of course, uh, the bandits came on them and carried out an attack. Now, it shows that crime is, has been instituted in that uh, state, Zamfara state. So let's talk along this line. Yeah, uh, you can be you're talking about, um, about crime, which are also talking about the root cause of that crime. What could be the possible causes of the crime? You know, uh, here we are talking about uh, insecurity, uh, banditry and all that we should be also be asking ourselves what are the likely causes of this uh, because um, in recent times if you go to a, a clinic or a hospital for you know a medical uh, checkup and you complain of an ailment a doctor that knows the unions has to conduct a test on you first to know exactly what the problem is what you want to treat as to whether you have malaria or you have typhoid fever or whatever, before you can start administering drugs. 
So the issue of uh, insecurity in Nigeria, or the issue of uh, uh, people coming to collect illegal taxes in a particular state in Nigeria, we should be asking ourselves, what actually is the root cause of this? If you ask me, it shows that uh, the security apparatus, you know, is weak, very weak. And uh, if they are weak, the question is, what is the way forward? What is the way forward? We can't be talking about one particular issue every year. The government comes to power, mm. makes all the promises, we will stop insecurity, we will stop poverty, we will take, get rid of unemployment, we will uh, improve our foreign policies, you know, and uh, we will improve the healthcare sector and all that. The moment that's one day, everybody goes in, everybody goes on the ground. And the same problem persists. Mm. Just like you said that when you started, mm. that uh, the service chiefs have just been disengaged mm. and new ones have just come on board. The new ones coming on board, what do they what do they have to put on the table? What are the logistics? What are the ideas they want to put on the table to checkmate all this embarrassment? Let me also say this, that what is happening now in Nigeria, especially in the northern part of Nigeria, about this issue of insecurity and banditry, mm. points only to one direction, that any outsider can always conclude, or allegedly conclude, that Nigeria's uh, you know, military is very, very weak. And the, the, the danger it's sending across the country is that if there is a foreign aggression, Nigeria as a country may not be able to withstand it. To me, it's an, it's an, an embarrassment, <coughs> an embarrassment that eight years, six years of good luck administration mm. and eight years of bad administration, we're still talking about people coming to collect illegal taxes from communities in Zafara State and other I I northern states. Mm. It's also an embarrassment to Nigerians to say that Banditry is in, Kas in Kasina State, Bronu State, and that a man can be worshipping in a church in Owo mm. and probably loses his life, yeah. that of his family, because he wants, he, he wants to worship God. God yeah. It's also an embarrassment to also say that a Kaduna, uh, Abuja Kaduna band trend can be attacked mm -hmm. by bandits and passengers taken away and held hostage for months. And our government was watching why families were groaning to pay ransom to rescue their victims. It's a very big embarrassment to Nigeria and the possible Africa that a prison as secure as Kujie prison can be broken into by bandits and bandits you know, released and very hardened criminals released. And so I think if we cannot narrow our discussion, this was for our state and three other states, mm. we should be narrowing our discussion broadly on Nigeria because the service chiefs are service chiefs for Nigerian nations. And we should be asking ourselves, the gentlemen that are coming on board right now, do they have a, the passion for nationhood in their hearts to serve this country? as citizens of this country. Okay. Let me pause you, then uh, I'll come back to uh, Barista Alami now. Now, uh, while I was putting this topic forward, uh, the word banditry, you know, the lexicon banditry uh, struck me. Uh, most of the major headlines uh, still use the word bandits. Now, I recall uh, some time ago that uh, the federal government had to look at that word, uh, bandits. Any person in that category uh, should be maybe term uh, terrorist and of course I remember they were now to be called terrorists and uh, terrorizing the peace of uh, nation the peace of nation and all that or trying to take over the government of there and all that and of course that that will, and when somebody is labeled a terrorist and it, it means that anything the government can take off that person now let us also look at maybe the way uh, the government or the authority uh, still refer to this crime, banditry. You, still, you are still talking about banditry, bandits, banditry. Why not uh, 
terrorist, te <laughs> you know, terrorism, uh, allergy. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, the nomenclature does not matter. Whether you call it banditry, they are bandits, or uh, terrorists, terrorism. terrorism. Yeah, Only you may say that a particular name is more befitting because of the, the nefarious activities they are actually carrying out. Uh, if they are referred to as bandits, if the security apparatus we have in the country are efficient enough and they are able to leave the activities in the board, fine and good. If they are referred to as terrorists and we are able to also check them, fine and good. So no matter the nomenclature you give them, our inability to actually check them. And it may not necessarily be because the service chiefs are not ready to do their job. You see, when in a war situation, normal war situation, mm -hmm. war is declared. Your enemies are ready, you are also battle ready, you get ready for the war. You know those who are fighting, you are seeing those who are fighting. Mm. Soldiers are trained for that. But a situation whereby you see people living peacefully, and then midnight, they target a particular locality, go and attack and assault them and kill them, set their houses on fire. Before you call the security agencies, they are gone. Sometimes you also wonder. The length of time they spend in a particular location and nothing uh, is done. Just like one is baffled when you mention the cheap gets. When we first heard the number of those kidnapped, some of us were thinking, oh, that should be a rumor. It's not possible. It's not practically possible. I can see after a long time, people say, oh, it should be a rumor. But when we start hearing that some of them have been rescued, some pregnant, some have delivered babies. So you mean people can adopt or kidnap such number in this country and be in a particular forest whether Sambisa or elsewhere and they cannot be located could it be Nigeria is too big or we have not been able to deploy a use of uh, uh, technology in uh, tackling crime that is one and on the other hand the locals they also have a lot of work to do you need to also be very conscious and be ready to defend yourself uh, in Islam, when you are faced with some situation, you are expected not to all sleep. There should be some people on guard. Whether they come to your locality or not, mm. you call them Harris. There should be some people sleeping while some are on guard. On while some are sleeping, the others are sleeping, the others are on guard. Mm -hmm. We have what is called Salatul Hawf, mm. prayer times of fear. Mm. That while some are praying, some will be on guard. When those on guard finish, then they will pray, the others will be on guard. Keep living that way. Mm. Uh, women are to not to travel alone or girls. Make sure you have a maharam, that is a uncle of yours or a brother or a son who is a man to accompany you in that journey mm. for your safety. Mm. And then, when you talk of weapons, in this situation now, I think it should be justified for us to start clamoring for us to be allowed to possess arms in this country. Since the security uh, agencies cannot uh, actually secure the Nigerian nation as big as it is. Mm. Then we should be thinking of, okay, how do we now all get arms? Because if I have my AK-47, you think twice before coming to invade my house. But without my AK-47, it's been said that it's only a foolish man that argues in face of a gun. Mm. Even if it's a, a 12 years boy, old boy that is holding the gun, you say you're a small boy, you pull the trigger, not even happen. The impact of the gun on you will be as impact the same impact as if it's 40 years old. Yeah, but, but we, we must be careful with that because uh, that also has its implication, uh, you know, because I remember, uh, t I think it was about some few years ago, now, about two, three years ago, when the Buhari's, uh, Buhari's administration had to sign a bill against uh, the ownership of, uh, uh, you know, heavy weapons. In other words, Nigerians could only have lights and simple weapons so uh, by the time you now let people have an ak-47 and all that don't you think that that will have implications but the terrorists are going with heavy weapons they are going with, with you know, we know there are some countries like america who already have that in circulation are even thinking of how to stop it but what you are faced with now in nigeria the issue of corruption is also there you know i can like i mentioned before you know these arms why do you have so much arms in circulation and uh, why is it that? Uh, in fact, you see, when people are hungry, there is poverty in the land. Mm. The ruling class have not been able to do their job the way they ought to do it. When you see a man is uh, uh, wearing in abject poverty, 
in the midst of plenty. You see some few, few Nigerians who are living uh, in uh, extravagant life because of the resources of the country that they have been able to, to, to accumulate. Mm. There is no social justice. There is no economic justice. Mm. Some, to get your so-called minimum wage increased to 30,000 naira is a problem. But meanwhile, you have people who go home with allowances that runs into millions of naira, mm. and we are all living in the same country. And so, when leaders are not ready to make sacrifice, to ensure that the followers are well taken care of, they are only selfish about themselves. Then the followers, as time goes on, you can no longer control them. Mm -hmm. It's part of it. In this, this same country that some cannot eat three square meals, that some can afford to change their furniture every year and change their cars every four years. So we need to actually face the reality and look at areas that we need to actually look at in order for us to know how to tackle this security challenge. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. uh, in looking at uh, areas now, uh, Baristan Balefo, you know, uh, something has been going on in Southern Cardinal for quite some time. Um, it's personally, I'm tempted to want to maybe term it a religious connotative, uh, you know, war, a religious war, so to say, a war that connotes a uh, religious war, something. You know, now, uh, the question is what are we really fighting? What is really going on in Nigeria? Is it just a case of terrorism, a case of banditry, or a case of cold war, a case of religious cold war in the country? Yes, let me start by saying that um, Nigeria's problem is a very simple problem. Nigeria's problem is a very simple problem. It's a very simple problem if we decide to tell ourselves the truth. But the problem is that everybody run away from the truth. And even when, even when we're discussing here, if myself and my learned colleague decide to say, say the truth here, you'll be telling us to you'll be hushing us down. No, you can say the because truth. Because you wouldn't like uh, NBC, to, NBC to find your station. No, NBC will not prevent you. That is the truth you, uh, of the matter. Uh, uh, so uh, we can't uh, even uh, tell NBC you the truth NBC won't here. prevent you from saying the truth. That is the truth of the matter. Provided, let your truth be back up with facts. Yeah, the facts, if you want me to tell you the fact. Now, the fact is this, is that... Nigeria as a nation has remained a marriage of unequal partners. Mm. Is a marriage of unequal partners. And when you are in a marriage and that marriage has broken down irretrievably, the only option that is left for that marriage is for you to approach the court of, the, of a competent jurisdiction. And if the judge of the High Court feels that that marriage has broken down irretrievably. The only option left for the judge is to dissolve the marriage. And if the judge feels that he can't dissolve the marriage, the judge has an option of advising the couple to return back to explore the option of ADR. ADR means alternative dispute resolution. Wherein the details can be brought in to see if they were able to listen to both parties and see how the issues can be resolved. Now, in addressing the issue of insecurity in Nigeria, a former head of state in this country has once said that when, you know, banditry lasts more than 48 hours, mm. then there's a real likelihood that government has in it, isn't it? And they are in addition issue further. When politicians who wants to win election at all costs decide to create some unholy bodies and use them for the purpose of selfish of achieving their political interest, and after achieving it, somebody somewhere will not be saying that the problem is with INEC. Meanwhile, INEC, they're on their own, observing the processes. Mm. But somebody has tried to engineer some people from somewhere to use them, to coerce them into doing something, bidding for him, to win an election. And after that election, that group feel that they have the right to exist and have the right to live. 
I hope they don't get what they want from the politicians now. They now return back as bandits, as terrorists, as a no haste men and all that. Mm. Now, the burden falls back to the Nigerian military. And so, like my late friend said earlier in his set, opening statement, he said that during the war, after the war, of course, during the war, there were arms all over the place. And after the war, we, we now saw, observe what we call the armed robbery. And it never even stopped. And the whole idea was that maybe the armed robbery was because, uh, because during the war, there were arms all over the place. So, the Nigerian situation is becoming very embarrassing. And so, if we want to leap it on the board, we must all see ourselves as Nigerians. Mm. The former American president, Jeff Kennedy, once said, ask not for what you, America can do for you, but what it can do for Nigeria. And for you to be a Nigerian, you must, you must have that passion for Nigeria. Mm. You, you can sacrifice yourself for the country. You can do everything, just like my friend Elephant Elele told you, that a neighbor is not just somebody living very close to you. If you say you're a Nigerian, every other Nigerian must matter, matter to you. Every life must matter to you. Okay. L let me come to... Um, no, I'm coming, sir. Before you come in. Yeah. In, in, in a few years back, mm. there was this incident that happened in, U in Uganda, where some Israelis were, 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 were headquartered in Uganda. Mm. And of course, the Israeli government came on board with what, they, what was described as 90 minutes attentable. The rescue operation was codenamed 90 minutes attentable. The Israelis have to flee in from Israel and rescue their citizens in Uganda within 90 minutes. And so, if we, we say that we're Nigerians, if you're a Christian, your life must matter. If you're a Muslim, your life must matter. If you're a pagan, your life must matter. So a Nigerian military officer should do everything, take all the pains to ensure that there is sanity in the country. But I think we have so many things that are dividing us. Mm. Either political divide, or religious. or religious divide, or economic divide, or cultural or personal interest divide, or greed that runs in us. So every day we are going down. We are going down on a daily basis. Because we don't see ourselves as one. Okay. I think the bottom line is that we should see ourselves as president, as one Nigerian. Mm. And so if you are the chief of army staff and a Nigerian is gone down along the streets of Lagos State, your, your major preoccupation should be how do I get the man who has gone down this man and bring him to justice? It mustn't be about where we're coming from, who appointed me or who didn't appoint me. And so the only way out. The only way forward is that we should recultivate re that passion for patriotism and see ourselves as one country. That's the only way we can move, the only way we can move uh, forward. Let me speak like my friend Wiki. Mm. The only way we can move uh, forward. forward is to see ourselves as one. And for sure, again, Nigerian military should explore recent technologies. The issue of being carrying gun to checkmate crime has long gone. Mm. All right. Today, everything is happening all over the world. Ukraine, it's technology. Russia is technology. Yeah. So we should be able to learn how to deploy drones. Mm. The army cannot be everywhere at the same time. Police can be everywhere at the same time. Yeah. Navy can be everywhere at the same time. Everyone can be everywhere at the same time. Okay. The whole world is functioning through drones. Okay. So okay. ask the next question.